Do you want to take it this week? Improvise and sing like that, man. That's your talent. Download the uplift where all your problems go away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Download the Uplift, a place where when we fall, Dane and I try and uplift you. What's going on? My name is Gabriel Mark. I am one of your fantastic hosts here on Download the Uplift, and I'm joined for week six live with you by the one, the only. He hangs out with flamingos. He drinks whiskey. He rolls them bones. Dane Davis. What up, man? How you doing? What's been going on this week, man? How's your week been? It's been good. Just uh, working. I had a um, speaker rental this weekend or last weekend on uh, Saturday for um, this nighttime like um, market that was going on. So it was cool. It's awesome. Nice man, staying on the grind. Yo, you're you. I think we're both very dedicated to the cause. But yo, the fact that you had a chaotic day, then battled traffic, right, and then somehow you still managed to show up for uh, week six. So it, it wasn't a bad day at all. You know, I, I um just had a couple of customers come in doing some sales and stuff like that. So, but mm. yeah, it wasn't bad. All right, beautiful. So yeah, big news. Uh, next week is going to be huge for us. We have our very first interview with uh, both of our good friend Johnny Gibson is going to be joining us and be joining you, our awesome audience. And uh, basically yeah, him man. and his bride uh, are from Texas and they moved out to Las Vegas and they just have a really cool story. So we're excited. Hopefully we get everything working tech-wise so you guys have the best listening and viewing experience. But uh, I'm stoked about it. What about you? Yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, the tech thing, we, we got to work that out in between Thursday and now. So we got a week. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, I, I think it's going to be good, man. If we can do like a couple of them in between doing our thing, I, I think that'll be good. Just mix it up and see how everything goes. So what's going on with the channel? We are at, you know, I don't even check the, like the iTunes or the Spotify ones, but on YouTube, we're up to 107. Nice. Um, the shorts are doing well. TikTok's doing really well, like 600 views. I can, I'm starting to see that you guys kind of really like the comical stuff too, like the pineapple thing did awesome. But actually, <laughs> actually, I did want to talk about this. So the caffeine one I posted today about caffeine being a legit drug, uh, we got a really cool comment. His comment was, I went from – 10 five hour energies to no caffeine, cold turkey. First, all right, think about that. Wow. He went to 10 yeah. five hour energies to no caffeine, cold turkey. First three weeks was rough, but now if I have caffeine, I feel like absolute beep. Uh, mind foggy, shakes, stomach turning, just weak feeling. Glad I quit. I, was, yeah. I, I respond, I was like, bro, that's epic. That's so much caffeine, man. Yeah, I I was I was never on that level, but the, it, like ten a day, I <laughs> I would, I think the most like I would do is like like tea or coffee with caffeine in it. I I may maybe did like five or six on average for a while, uh, which is still a lot. But yeah, ten energy drinks that's that's insane. I've been drinking coffee since I was like five years old. <laughs> so that's wild. Yeah. When I was thinking about that many five-hour energies, if you put anything in your body at that level, like I, I'm, I would think it would be – like if you eat a ton, a ton, a ton of sugar every every day like that and you just quit, you're, you're going to go through some stuff. Like any kind of chemical you take in like that or maybe anything in general that you do so much and then you just stop. It's like, yeah, whoa, it's going to be – it's going to be a shock. Ah, for sure. One more note. We have patios here at my apartment, and it's cool because you can have your own grill out there. You don't have to worry about cleaning. I used to despise when I used to live in an apartment and it was community grills. It was one of my pet peeves when you'd go there and there was just like old food, especially if there was a brush down there. It's like it's just like the people that don't return their shopping carts. It drives me bananas. But um, yeah, I didn't even think about that. But here we have uh, patios, which is nice. Like I, I. I grill a lot because I think food just tastes way better. 
And uh, so they cut, but every year, I guess they have to come in to inspect because weeds grow and make sure, you know, my neighbor's dogs aren't doing their business out there and it's all funky. So I knew they were coming and I'm a pretty clean guy, but I still like cleaned <laughs> like a lot for people that, by the way, I'm paying these people. Well, I'm paying their company. But my question to you was, I know you guys um, have house cleaners. But do you ever, I know when I have house cleaners too, I always go, I clean before they come a little bit. I know it's a little crazy, but what do you think about that? Like, what you, what's your thought process <laughs> with cleaning for the cleaners? I, I get it. I, I totally get that kind of mentality. You don't want it to be too dirty. <laughs> yeah. It's also the mentality of like these people, I see them because their office is right next to the gym every day. I, first, like, once again, I'm not a slob. I just wanted to want to look good. But as far as house cleaners, I mean, the bender years, I like to bring this up every week, dude. I feel bad. Like, truly cans just all over the floor and just – yeah, that's not cool. But even still, I've managed to get everything in a garbage bag at least and get it out of the apartment. But, man, there were some rough apartments back in 2018, 2019. <laughs> Oof, rough. Just like takeout boxes and booze. <laughs> <laughs> But we, we're, we're upgrading. We're moving forward and upwards, my dude. Let's get right into current events. This week, we're going to get it started. Yo, Dane, hit me with number one. What's going on in the world today, bro? We were talking about space travel a bit last, last week, right? On the 12th of June this year, so yesterday. Okay. The record for days in space was set at 1,000 days. Oleg Kononenko of Russia became the first human to spend 1,000 days in space. Wow. This was done over five different missions, allowing for unprecedented research on the effects of long-term space travel. This includes studies uh, studying impact on eye health, bone loss, blood flow, radiation exposure, which we talked about last time, and uh, motion sickness in space, which I didn't even think of. That's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. That's unbelievable. So you spend a thousand days uh, in space. That's just space travel. So that's up in orbit and um, in in the actual uh, space station or in a vehicle. Um, you spend eighteen hours on spacewalks. So EVAs, wow. extra vehicle activities. Wow. Um, and he's got a bunch of like medals from NASA and stuff like that. So almost three years, like yeah. oh, in a row. Um, no, yeah. So th this is this was done over five different missions. Oh, okay. That, all yeah. right. Not even that big a deal. I thought it was all at once. <laughs> all right. right. Well, so divide a thousand by five. Two hundred uh, average. Two hundred days each. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So almost wow. a year. <laughs> all right. All right. It's kind of a big deal. Shout out. What's his name? His first name? Oleg Kononenko. There you go, Oleg. Shout out. Yo, nice work, man. That, way to get us back up into the orbit for our first car. That's <laughs> cool, though. No, it's very cool. You know, I'm, I don't I'm taking know this up into space every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're uplifting you really high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's wild. That was yesterday, huh? Yeah, we record yeah. these on Thursdays. Well, I'm going to hit you back with another current event. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Co Joey Chestnut, the hot dog dude, is going to be facing <laughs> off against Kobayashi on September 2nd on Netflix. Apparently, Kobayashi is 0-3 against Chestnut. <laughs> and this has been... <laughs> well, why are you laughing at Chestnut? <laughs> it's just such like a like scientists in space to hot dog eating contest. <laughs> So, yo, oh, it's a been... hot dog eating contest. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were talking you don't know about who Joey Chestnut is? No, I, I don't think I've heard of him. Well, all right. <laughs> but now I get it. I get why you're laughing at that. So it's 15 years in the making. Okay, yeah, it's going to be on Netflix on Labor Day. First of all, shout out Netflix for – they're doing more and more live stuff, like the Tom Brady roast, which was fantastic. Uh, they're going to have the, the, um, the Jake Paul Tyson fight, which actually got pushed in November. Oh, I Tyson... thought that got canceled. Nah, it got pushed, but he's okay. they're fighting in November, dude. There's such a big bag of money to be made that like they're gonna they're gonna make it happen. 
But yeah. so when you think of competitive eating, do you know who, like the guys that like dunk the bun in the water and stuff? Do you consider I, a sport? Because they do. I I would because I can't do it. <laughs> wow, um, dude! Oh, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's uh, I I've seen some of the techniques. Like I I don't I don't watch a lot of those like eating competitions and stuff like that, but. I ha- I do I have watched like man versus food and stuff like that. I don't know if you're savvy to that, but mm-hmm. oh yeah, it, it's it's crazy. I I don't know how people get to the point of being able to do that. And and what's what's even like wilder than that is uh, some of the best guys are like these super lanky, skinny dudes. So. <laughs> I show you Kobayashi. I remember watching a thing years ago on mtv when they showed something other than ridiculousness it was called uh true life i'm a competitive eater and this guy was on there and he uh this is kobayashi just a dude he's 46 now five eight uh oh you know i may i may have seen this guy he's like small yeah and this is joey chestnut look at this to face trial on hot dog eating contest look at these guys crazy but um, yeah, I think I mean I don't know I I can't say that I've ever really like sat and be like oh I can't wait for this uh this hot dog competition but what they do they have to train their stomachs to be able to get bigger it's it's wild like they'll sit and eat just bags of lettuce to stretch but the the True Life the MTV thing it had the Kobayashi guy sitting with like a mountain of noodles and like the chef's like wow. I'm going to get him. And at the end, Kobayashi's like, man, I don't know what kind of spice. This was all subbed or dubbed. He was like, it's a very spicy sauce. But this poor guy's like <laughs> struggling. September 2nd, Netflix, Joey Chestnut against Kobayashi. And Joey Chestnut's like, he's like Hulk in the 80s, Hulkamania. But either way, that that's my current event. I like to keep it, <laughs> keep things going. Uh, what about you, man? What's uh, What's another current event from your angle? What do you know about super fungi? Uh, like a like a fungus? Yeah. But super? Yeah. Not too much. Not too much. Well, look, I don't know what all of the uh, fungi is that's considered to be the super fungi. If I were to pick a couple, I would pick penicillium, which is what they use to produce penicillin. Nice pretty important Mm -hmm. aspergillus i think that's how you say it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's used for several medications and it also is used to produce statins i don't know what that what's that uh statins are cholesterol lowering drugs and uh, immunosuppressants and stuff like that so very important stuff researchers uh found something interesting about another kind of fungus so researchers researchers have found that the marine fungus Peringeniodontium can degrade polyethylene plastic. And that's plastics like um, soda and water bottles, mouthwash bottles, um, peanut butter containers, salad dressing uh, containers, and uh, vegetable oil containers. Heck yeah. So that's like most of, uh, that's the most common kind of plastic found in the ocean. The so ocean. it's pretty cool that they found that. That's unbelievable, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it, it melts it away? Yeah, it, it's it starts to degrade it. So you know, I'm guessing it's like the fungus eating it eating and stuff it. like that. Dude. But they say they say degrade. That's cool. So that's why I said speaking of eating. <laughs> Yo, I, dude, you know how much that would be a game changer? I oh, I used to be so reckless with plastic. I used to order just sleeves of plastic cups and every day I would make a cough iced coffee. And then put it in one of these cups, drink it, and then just toss it out wherever I was. Now I eat <laughs> reusable cups. I mean, you look at some of these countries, like the, their ocean, even like right on their coast, it's just like flowing bottles and plastic. Oh, yeah. And any way to get rid of that. Because, I mean, dude, if you just leave a plastic bottle out in the a landfill, how long would it take to actually go away? Like, what's the stat on that? Plastic doesn't biodegrade until you know, now decompose. Um, Yo, 450 years. That's how long it would take for a plastic bottle. So you're saying these geniuses in the, in the Netherlands, even though they could be in Amsterdam, red light district, partying it up, they're inventing (laughs) super funguses that eat away all this nonsense. It's 
it, yeah, they discovered, discovered this uh, this fungus, uh, Peringeodontium, and uh, basically it can start degrading plastic uh, when it's exposed to UV sunlight. The, them um, seeing that you know exposing this this one to UV, it looks promising that uh, it could be a future solution for our plastic problems. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. I'm on board with yeah. that because uh, it's bad. Yeah, I mean, everywhere, every business you go into, I remember in Las Vegas or here where it's it's hot here too, it's like, can I get you a bottle of water? And it's just like, yeah, uh, it's pretty bad. I actually just bought a case yesterday. <laughs> I, look, I, I use bottles and stuff like that. I it, It's... It's difficult to get rid of plastics because they they actually are very useful and and what, you know I I totally get it like whenever people talk about like a substitute or something like that it's it, it's important to talk about it but also like what's the solution yeah what's the substitute that we're gonna actually be able to do and that's gonna be sustainable for not only the planet but the economy and I know people don't like to hear that but that's those are important factors as well in trying to find real solutions for this stuff eventually there's going to be a gabriel jr or a little <laughs> does anybody want to date me <laughs> <laughs> just play it. well not really <laughs> too bad i don't have any visitors <laughs> but um yeah so tom brady got inducted into the Patri- patriots hall of fame which is weird they give red jackets it's cool i've been there before they it's basically like a hall of fame of all great Patriots since 1960. Um, But yeah, he came out guns blazing and you know, the Patriots are going to hang on to everything Tom Brady because for the eternity, because if you have the best player ever, like you gotta, you gotta hang on to him. If you're trying to start a business, if you're trying to work out, if you're trying to stay on a diet or if you're just trying to stay focused, man, he said something, and you could tell it's going kind of viral because everyone's like, let's go, which is like his <laughs> thing. Um, but I heard it and I just automatically thought about the channel because right now it's me and you on this podcast. But us on just channel management, like every day posting and editing and all this stuff. And it's only been five, six weeks. But, you know, it's it's a good amount, especially, you know, you have, if you have other stuff going on. So I want to share this with you because it's like. So buckle up, everybody. Look at what this man has to say here. Can't wait, man. No matter who you are, there are bumps and hits and bruises along the way. And my advice is to prepare yourself because football lessons teach us that success and achievement come from overcoming adversity. And that team accomplishment far exceeds anyone's individual goals. But here, last place, this is it. <laughs> Still handsome. To be successful at anything, the truth is you don't have to be special. You just have to be what most people aren't. Consistent, determined, and willing to work for it. No shortcuts. If you look at all my teammates here tonight, it would be impossible to find better examples of men who embody that work ethic, integrity, purpose, determination, and discipline that it takes to be a champion in life. No matter. (laughs) No, that's so true. Yeah, that's so true. And uh, let me say something because I believe in all the stuff and all the stuff I've been peddling to you guys. I mean this, even if I go on a trip, I'm going to make sure I'm have content stacked up because I will stay consistent. And that's with anything. It ain't easy. Some of those days, man, and especially with this stuff, when I'm sitting and stuff's crashing or you, you just worked your ass off all day, sat in traffic in 109 degree Las Vegas weather, yet you show up because you're consistent. So let me tell you something, because I'm probably going to make this into a short. Stay after it, boys. Tom Brady's right. I love it. That's why he's the goat. And I, I'm charged up. What do you think? What do you think, Dave? <laughs> Hell yeah, man! That that's awesome. No, I I I totally agree with with uh, with everything he said. Like, <laughs> if if you don't if you don't want it bad enough, like it, it's gonna it's gonna kick you out. You know, it's it, like you're you're gonna get you're gonna get those no's. You're gonna get rejections. You're gonna get all that stuff. But if you don't keep at it and you don't keep going, like okay, fine, this person doesn't want me to 
you know, do work for them, but I'm going to figure out another way of doing it. Mm. Like that, that's just what needs to happen. Every, everything that you're, you're trying to do in your life, like you, you need to figure out which door is going to open for you. And when one closes, you need to find another door. Mm. That's it. Ooh, I like that. You came up with that quote. Damn, you should be a quote of the week. (laughs) You want to be good at anything. Just stay consistent. And that's why the dude is, I think he's, well, he's not that much old, older than me, but he's uh he's he was like one of the best ever. But it, it's like yo, it, he started that speech off talking about football. He goes, yo, it's not easy to be a kid, wake up at six a.m. on your summer vacation while you know the rest of your friends are at home eating pancakes or in bed oh, and yeah, gonna dude. eat pancakes when you have to go do two a days and work out. But uh, yeah, dude, can, can I can I share something with you as well? Because it's. <laughs> It's pretty freaking hilarious, but I I have a a video as well that I was going to show you. Yeah. That's like this exact thing. Cool. They're not jealous of how you got it. No comedians are jealous of how I got it. No one sits there and goes, oh, I wish I could sit for 10 hours a day and write jokes. Oh. They think I want to play that venue or I'd, I'd love to have that Netflix special, but they don't sit there going, well, what pathology would you need in your head to write that many one liners? and to care that much about it. Who would you have to be to do that? And we're all chasing something, right? I think we're chasing imposter syndrome. I think imposter syndrome's got a bad reputation and it's great. You should feel it every 18 months. As you level up, you should feel like, do I belong here? Don't feel comfortable, lovely. As soon as you start to feel comfortable, you need to push yourself a little bit further. Less of what you've got. I like that one. Yeah, dude. They're not jealous of what, of. They're jealous of what you've got. They're not jealous of how you got it. Mm. There was a uh, there was a meme like that that actually sums that up. There was like a guy sitting alone in the bleachers. It was like the support, and then it's like the whole crowd. It's like the congratulations, but or something like that. Yeah. But no, that that dude's cool. I feel like I've seen him before. What's his deal? Uh, he, he's a comedian. He he's really great at roasting hecklers. Oh, great. Like that, that's Justice. all the shorts are basically. <laughs> well, but yeah, man, J- uh, Jimmy Carr and freaking Tom Brady, man, just dropping the knowledge. I love it. <laughs> so, should we get into our lesson of the week? I'm going to preface that by saying, let's start off with the quote of the week. Oh, yeah, baby. That's right. It's the quote of the week, guys. Yeah. Hey, you in the back? Quote of the week time. Oh, yeah. You come here for fun and knowledge, and that's why we're here. You're welcome. Thanks. Quote of the week. The best bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep. That's from E. Joseph Kosman, or Kosman. And the title of this week's lesson of the week is Sleep Well, Live Well. Boom. You helped bring this up. We talked about nutrition last week. One of the pillars, the one of the other huge pillars, is getting a good night's sleep, getting your rest, staying sane. Yo, open us up. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, man, I like that quote. Sleep deprivation in the short term can lead to mood changes, irritability, difficulty concentrating, memory problems, fatigue, weakened immune system, and an increased appetite, which is interesting. Those are the short-term effects. The long-term effects are high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, mental health disorders such as anxiety and depression. So when we're talking about your mood and everything, if you're sleep deprived, that's going to that's going to detriment you a bunch. So, what do you think about those? What what stands out to you is like things that uh are side effects of lack of sleep? Oh man, I, I think right off the rip, I think you can, well, you, you die, right? If you don't sleep, oh, you die, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Um, guess how, guess how, guess what the record is for the uh, longest time of someone not sleeping? All right. Uh, this is actually a good question. Comment down below your guess or pause it here. From not having any sleep until your brain's like, all right, we tried. I'm out of here. I'm saying you got 13 days. <laughs> 13 days? 13 days. 
the the official record the official record of no sleep was held by randy gardner it's about 60 years ago and he went 11 days without sleep wow no sleep at all Ugh. when randy was uh doing this experiment it was it was for a science experiment actually when he was in high school i believe and uh, he got so much traction from the like news and everything sort of following the science experiment in his local town um that he got the attention of a sleep researcher so he actually had like a professional you know scientist researching the effects of sleep and the effects of sleep deprivation to monitor his brain activity and to make sure that he was okay during this experiment wow. uh, and just see what the effects were. But um, he would have hallucinations throughout this whole process. He would um, think that like paths were appearing in his own home, like a path into the, the woods or like whatever it was and just other kinds of hallucinations yeah, 11 days. Uh, and after that, he slept for 14 hours the first night and then a regular eight hours of sleep and then continued on normal sleep patterns and stuff like that. But he said he suffered from insomnia and he believes it's a it was a side effect from that experiment. Oh, of course, um, he eventually found something to fix that. But yeah, dude, like it's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy what what your body can live with and what it can live with, what it can't live with three days for water. It's done. Uh, sleep. Let's go with like 11 to 16 days. And then you're probably not going to be good. And then food a month. Wow. I would love to, when we grow eventually have like a legit MD on just to answer a bunch of crazy questions like that. Like, because the body is so, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Like you think of, you know, guys that are homeless guys or whatever, like they literally, their whole day is just drinking malt liquor, passing out on the street, but like, they're not getting vitamins and stuff, but you know, some yeah. of them are just well, out the, there for the, years. I, I was, I was going to bring that up too. I mean, like it, talking about the, uh, 11 day, uh, lack of sleep experiment that, that, uh, Randy conducted, or, you know, just not getting enough sleep because of whatever reason. But even if you get like eight hours, um, it's also about the quality of your sleep. And that's like, you know, some people might be like, well, I, I get eight hours a night. I don't understand why I'm so tired or maybe I'm having these adverse effects with my body. Because like, you know, short term, like like I said, it, it, it's, you know, it's irritability. It's It's like memory problems, fatigue, stuff like that. But when you get into those long term issues, like how many how many people suffer for like serious health issues because or partly because of sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. maybe a combination of their diet, but also you know that they're not getting enough quality sleep. The question is, all right, we talk about sleep. How much sleep do we need? I thought it was six hours, but apparently, according to all the interwebs, you're supposed to get at least seven and it's more importantly, it's like a routine. That's one of the hard things about being a trucker. Um, yeah, you have to be off the road for a certain time, but you could one night be driving all night, sleep all day, and then the next day drive all day, sleep all night, and it's so bad for you. Everything I read was all about like routine when it comes to sleep, but you mentioned how much sleep messes with your mental health and your mood. Like um, It's crazy because yeah. one's like – um was it the double negative or whatever? Because it says that, okay, if um, you're better at coping when you have a uh, restful sleep, but if you're really stressing out about something, you're probably not going to be sleeping. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, exactly what you said. It says sleep reduces cortisol levels, which is like your stress hormone. Like if you have high mm -hmm. cortisol, like you're going to be stressed out. But, you know, I think – of the dog days. And like, I, I have no problem being open about the benders or just any bender in general. But like, if you're, if I was like drinking a lot or partying a lot, uh, there would be nights when I would just pass out on the couch, like, ha, like a zombie wake up yeah, yeah. and then continue raging for like four five, six, seven, eight days at a time. 
and with just little power pass outs and like bro that's an extreme case but let's just talk about how booze affects your sleep in the first place apparently when you drink mm-hmm. your body doesn't go into correct REM sleep because your your mind still thinks it's awake when you're when you drink a bunch of booze and you try and sleep right well yeah i mean it it, it will throw off a, a lot of different things um as far as your like hormone levels go and your um just just the chemistry of your of your your body like you, you definitely don't get proper sleep and then you got to think of like uh you're dehydrated there's probably parts of your body that are inflamed uh depending on how much you you have been drinking mm-hmm. and how regularly you drink so you know persistent alcohol usage and excessive alcohol usage like yeah you you're you're not you're not getting a good night's sleep i've i've had it where i've like been out drinking the whole night and it's super fun and i love yeah. it of course <laughs> Uh, but the the next day, like if I have to wake up early, I can start to to feel it. Like if I was eighteen, no problem. Easy, if easy I, work. If, yeah, twenty five, I'm good, right? But the moment the moment it was like twenty seven, twenty nine, like I started I started feeling feeling it a lot more. And I can still I can still go out and party. I can still do my thing with it, and you know, I. I I'm I'm all good. Like I can still do that, but doing it, you know, two days in a row, three days in a row, that's where my body really starts to tell me like, Hey, <laughs> this is enough. It's, so on that note of heavy meals and booze and all this stuff, I'd like to discuss like, yo, something called sleep hygiene. So I'm actually going to ask for the audience's help this week because honestly, I've been so good with a lot of things, but for some reason, this Bikes and Beards YouTube channel is kicking my butt, and every time, I'm like, time for bed, but yo, I've been such a breaker of my own rules, I've been watching one, even if it's like an eight-minute video, before I go to bed instead of reading, so the challenge to the audience this week, and make the commitment, comment, like, do whatever you got to do, phone or your TV, ditch any kind of screen time before bed that's a better thing so for the next five to seven days the challenge from the team at download the uplift is join me as we cut out all screen usage at least just right before going to bed i mean even if you're watching something you walk into your room get rid of the screens uh what do you think about the challenge would you like to join me as a fellow member of download the uplift tiki team uh well i'm I'm gonna just be honest that's gonna be hard for me yeah, I I want to I want to give it a shot. It's gonna be hard. Like it's easy for me to say now, but for yeah. some reason, dude, like I will walk the dog and then I'll come in and I'll be like, oh, this is entertaining. And I literally I put my phone sideways landscape next to my pillow and I'll watch a video and go to bed. Yeah. But I know for a fact that even though it shuts off, I sleep way better if I just like an old man with my book and I read like two pages <laughs> and then shut the light off. Another thing I struggle with is heavy meals. Like I will eat way yeah. too close to bedtime. Like I like a bowl. Like even if I'm on a healthy day, like a huge bowl of salad and greens. But it's still a lot of food for you to digest. Yeah, I I do all the wrong things with sleep. I <laughs> like by by those standards. But so for me, like the the biggest issue I have with not not having a TV on, and I I try and I try and put on something that's kind of mundane, like a YouTube video I've seen before, right. hundreds of times. Yeah, you know? um, something that I'm kind of interested but in, not too interested in. Uh, but if I have nothing, my mind just goes like bananas. Hmm. It's so I I'll if if I'm in pitch black. No, no noise whatsoever. I'm thinking about everything, <laughs> so it it almost like calms me down having uh having something there that's just something that I don't really care too much about, but it's, it's interesting enough that it keeps my mind a bit pre- preoccupied. You know, you said uh, pitch black on my hinge because yeah, I started a hinge up. You can put a pole up, and my pole, you know, just to engage your potential match my my uh my poll on hinge was which do we have in common number one sleeping with a fan and or some kind of noise two sleeping in a completely silent room 
Three, you're a psycho if you sleep in a completely silent room, bro. <laughs> My room, I'll say, like, I got no TV. I try, I'm try. i going to try and cut down the phone. But, yo, it's a whirlwind in there with the fan. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and my boys up in uh, in Mass, they're oh, like, we, I think <laughs> it was like whenever we all go away together, they bring in box fans. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I need noise. Uh, yeah. I remember I went to Mexico with one. I went to Mexico with a girl, and I brought a travel fan just in case. It's oh, not only you're in a hotel, but yeah, I need. So when you mentioned you sleeping quietly like that in a dark, quiet room, that sounds horrible. Sleepovers in high school and all that stuff. Like I, I've had friends that like. <laughs> zero light they, they want zero light and and even if it's like you know the um the light that would that would just be blinking on like the uh the cable box or or if you yeah, didn't set so, the so time it just says 12 well yeah yeah 12. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the time blinking or even just this tiny little light on the vcr he was like nope he covered it up with pillows <laughs> i was like this is ridiculous man come on so important for a relationship like if you if you aren't compatible with like how you're setting the room for sleep it's like i guess sleep in other rooms which is doable as well but you need to think about sleep in general especially if you're thinking about cheaping out on a mattress it's a third of yeah. your life like make sure that your sleep oh, yeah. habits of that third of your life are kind of on point because it matters so much with it comes not only your mental health but your um, physical health as well. I mean, dude, I, I think that like you mentioned weight gain, probably one of the reasons, you know, I'm working hard in the gym and the diet and stuff, but I, I try and get pretty good sleep. Although I would be lying to you guys. I would never lie to you audience that sometimes, dude, I am going to bed way too late and I'm only getting five, six hours. Cause when Winston gets up, it's like, Hey, I got to pee. You want me to pee on the bed, homie? I got to pee. I won't sugarcoat it. I, you know, you already know I, I get stupid amount like just horrible no horrible sleep because because it's either it's either no sleep or it's not consistent sleep or it's like you know i i do sometimes uh go out and have have drinks for like a couple days in a mm -hmm. row or whatever oh, yeah. it is and and by by day three or day two my body's like come on now <laughs> You mentioned it before is insomnia. So how do we deal with that, guys? Because I know a lot of people, you might have a lot on your mind because, you know, you got work, you got family, you got everything weighing on you and you unfortunately bring that to bed. You know, there's stuff like, like uh, melatonin. There's stuff like melatonin. Uh, then there's stuff like Ambien. I don't even know if they sell that anymore, but that stuff will literally yeah. put you out. And I don't think that's really necessarily good sleep. Ambien is definitely not something that, I think anyone recommends for regular use on uh, sleeping issues because um, they, they don't even uh, recommend that you take melatonin all the time, or at least uh, the doctors that I've heard from wouldn't recommend that um, because if you, if you keep taking extra supplements for stuff, it, it, it eventually like throws off your body's natural like um, way that it, interacts with that or produces it so if, if you take extra melatonin and you do that all the time eventually your body is going to be a bit desensitized to me melatonin mm -hmm. from what i'm hearing and what i've uh seen on the internet do you ever get so tired that you don't realize that you're tired you feel wide awake and mm -hmm. you almost like don't want to go to bed like like what happens with me is like if i try and go to bed I feel like my body is just relaxing far too much. So I kind of like jolt out of bed. Hmm. Um, you know, like that's intense. It's man. probably, a, yeah, it's probably like a combination of um, like some of the other stuff that I occasionally have going on. Um, and uh, like just being pretty sleep deprived. Like if I, if I've only gotten like a few hours or three hours of sleep, for a couple of nights in a row, I start to get to that point where I'm like, I don't even realize how tired I am. And I'm like pretty jittery and just all, all these effects and stuff that, that we've already listed off. Like, that's how I feel. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know what might help calm your mind? Journaling. 
<laughs> hey, I had to mention it. One thing I, I will say, my boy Ken in uh, Massachusetts, I, I hope to have him on one week too. He's like this real estate guru and his kids are like my nieces. I love those girls. But he stopped me when we lived together back in like 2006. I was taking NyQuil and I remember him saying, and I went for like day three and I was like, oh, it's great. You just fall asleep. He's like, nah, man, watch out. I, I, he's like, I did that with Tylenol PM and it actually turned out to be kind of a nightmare. So My my whole general take on it is I, I don't like to be reliant on things as much as possible. Mm, I like that. Um, so I I don't want to take too much melatonin. I don't want to like have to do anything on a daily basis. Do you have any weird like sleeping things apparently i've heard i order food in my sleep like i straight talk in my sleep sometimes like i have a <laughs> double cheeseburger really i don't know i don't know it's been a while kids but uh <laughs> supposedly i i, I don't do snore funny. i know my pops used to snore oh my goodness but i do want to mention that real quick is like hey if you're not getting sleep because your significant other is snoring like that could probably be like a legit real problem like you gotta address it somehow i mean like if you're being woken up by violent um yeah yeah do you do you snore do you uh, do you talk in your sleep do you sleepwalk anything crazy um i think i've i've spoken in my sleep a few times but i don't know what i said like i no one's actually come up to me and said like you ordered 11 buttery (laughs) i don't snore from from uh what i know I used to um I used to move around a lot and I I still do like I'll just I'll keep rolling over throughout the night just to get comfortable but I I used to have like arms just flailing yeah. and, like it's awesome um yeah you know, a couple times of like hit people in the oh. face and stuff like that from yeah violence um yeah you know just only when I'm unconscious <laughs> just something fun because we kind of talked about serious things have you ever had a lucid dream? I don't even know. What's, what is a lucid dream? A lucid dream is basically like you're in REM sleep. Um, and then well, I, I don't even know if it has to be REM sleep. But you basically just realize that you're dreaming. Oh, yes, I have. And that's and a trip, dude. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Dude, is that what they're called? Yeah, lucid dreaming. But that's also good. Like I used to, I remember being a little kid and I had a nightmare and I remember waking up into it. I was like, yo, this is a dream. And I like laughed off like the ghoul or whatever he was. Yeah, I was like, yeah. dude, I know this is a dream. You can't hurt me, bro. I, I'm not even kidding. I, <laughs> I'm not BSing you at all. Yeah. Or, you know, we don't want to, we're going to keep everything PG here at Download the Uplift, but there's other kinds of lucid dreams where it's like, Yo, I don't want this to end. <laughs> she likes me. Yeah, she well, really likes me. <laughs> I and I've I've heard some some people say like uh, like when you have like that kind of dream, um, and then you realize you're dreaming, and all of a sudden you wake up, and you're like, no, hundred <laughs> percent, no, she loved me, or whatever. Like some people swear by trying to to lucid dream to like figure this out, especially like for creativity and stuff like that. Um, so what people often do is they'll do things like reality checks. I don't know how that exactly works, but you basically uh, try and figure out, like, is there anything weird that I'm, that's going on right now? And that might indicate I'm in a dream. So they try and do this while they're sleeping. And then the other thing is they keep a dream journal. And I thought you'd think that was interesting. Hmm. Boy, you just leave it next to your bed. And as soon as you wake up, try and write it down. Like to remember yeah. it. Oh, that's so cool. I would try that for yeah. sure. That's hard though. Yeah. It's like, that's like that Seinfeld episode. He woke up, he's like, <laughs> and he tried to write down the joke he thought of and it made no sense at all. It was just random words. <laughs> just real quick about naps. I'm going to fire off facts just about naps real quick. Hey, listen, 10 to 20 minutes. That's your power nap, baby. Improve your alertness and your energy. Boom. 10 to 20 minutes. 30 minutes okay if you hit the 30 minutes you're gonna get groggy yeah it's not good don't do 30 minutes but if you go to the hour mark that's your best for memory 
and recalling facts and faces. So, hey, I really liked meeting Dane the other day. Let me go sleep for an hour, and I'm going to remember him. But, yeah, real quick comment down below. Do you take naps? And uh, I don't, but do you nap? Uh, and what are your what are your, any quick strategies for our audience, Dane, on napping? I, I've been naturally gifted at being able to sleep at any location under any circumstance, wow. like driving the car. No, well, not not me driving the car, but me riding in the car. <laughs> I love <laughs> like that autopilot. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, just yeah, chilling behind the wheel, whatever. Um, no, so yeah, dry, uh, riding in a car, uh, riding in a plane. Could could be anything, dude. I can sleep sitting up. I can sleep almost standing up, honestly. That's but, a blessing, dude. It's um, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It, it, dude, I, I was built for the tour life in a lot mm. of ways. W when I was on tour in Europe, I slept throughout most of the travel. And everyone was super jealous. But um, I don't nap all the time. But if, if, I, uh, if I'm working like 16 or 18 hours in a day... And it's like two different gigs, um, so there's a break in between. I'll, I'll take a nap, and and it could it could be like ten minutes, like you're mm. saying, and that actually does like refresh me. Uh, um, sometimes I'll I'll do like an hour or something like that. So I I'm all in favor for naps. I think that it should be more of a regular thing, especially if you're like um, one thing I wanted to bring up is like if you're on that grind life. Uh, naps are going to be essential mm. <laughs> so you're getting no sleep if you're one of those people it's like uh you know i get to bed at 1 a.m and wake up at four because <laughs> you're just working um yeah like you you definitely need some naps in between uh to to just survive um not that like i think i think grind life is a bit too um uh, it's too celebrated yes uh these days because really a good night's sleep is the best thing and and it's it's not to say like working harder is going to get you further all by itself and it's not going to lead to you uh thinking clear or anything else like that like you you gotta you gotta face facts like sometimes getting a good night's sleep is really what's going to clear your mind um, but you know, I do, I do have those moments where I'm, I'm doing the grind life thing. I'm getting absolutely no sleep. Sometimes refer to my work schedule sometimes as, as hell week when I have, uh, work during the day and the night and I go to bed like in between work shifts, I have maybe four to six hours. And obviously when I get home, I have to eat, I have to, you know, do a bunch of stuff. And then, um, I only get like maybe two, three hours of sleep on those nights and it's terrible, but, but I, you know, I call it hell week. And then I, the week after I don't schedule anything and I just sleep. I think in Spain, they like legit have siestas when you talk about like, like I'm pretty sure they just yeah. shut down businesses for like an hour or something. Hold on. I got to look that up. The siesta, which means a midday or afternoon rest or nap, has become a big part of Spanish culture. Many businesses in Barcelona and other parts of the country still shut down every day so that the siestas can take place. See, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I think that's awesome. And, and like, like I said, I think that should be a more normal, more nor normalized thing. Um, but also... That makes me wonder because, like, you know, you know, here we have, uh, if if you're with a legitimate company or whatever, it's usually like two 15 minute breaks and then like a 30 minute lunch or an hour lunch, and it's mandatory. And my whole take on that is like, that's great that, uh, you know, we have mandatory lunches, we have breaks and stuff like that. But what I feel ends up happening is, is you're just, you just end up spending instead of eight hours at your nine to five it's now a nine to six or it's an eight to yeah five. oh it's nightmare so so it it kind of just falls back on the employee it's like you're gonna get a break it's mandatory that you take this break but we're also going to keep you here longer so it's like even more of your life is kind of just uh 
taken away that and, and you know we sleep a third of our life we also work a third of our life so that's a different kind of topic but just you know I, I wonder if they uh keep it like an eight hour sort of deal or or a regular work shift um over there and just give them the the hour for free to take a take a nap or if it's like well, we're gonna hold you here an no, extra hour, bro. They they like drink wine and <laughs> stuff at so. like banks. They don't care, dude. They're chilling in Spain, man. Like, <laughs> ah, it's all right. Have some wine. Well, when we have Chase on, Chase actually I think went to school in Spain, so I would love to hear about it from him because that's dude's like fluent Espanol because he's just like I, I just went there and there's no other option but to learn it. So I'm stoked to talk yeah, to him yeah. maybe in a couple of weeks. Um, it's the best way to learn another language. Oh yeah. Like you want to go learn, uh, yeah, whatever, go immerse yourself in it where you got to learn. Like I do, I've been doing Duolingo since 2018, but I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I, I could swing a little bit, but like, if you want to be fluent in a language, especially like slang and stuff, like go live in Colombia. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. Yeah. man. Ain't... Have you, have you heard of, uh, those, um, those courses that, are um it, it's like the same military training that they give to interpreters um where it's like they basically teach someone a language and teach them how to speak it completely naturally because these are people that need to blend like 100 percent blend yeah. in with the with the uh place that they're going they teach it in like three months or something like that you go from not knowing it at all to like hardcore training hardcore studying you know a full language well enough to to be viewed as a as a natural like local there uh i haven't heard of it but it sounds pretty freaking cool and uh yeah it's just like any other skill if you want to learn a new language or you want to learn how to do a podcast you just got to do it a lot there's this kid on youtube it's uh his name's like Zhao main but he's like this irish kid but he speaks fluent mandarin so he'll go in and like He'll know they're talking trash, or he'll find out that they might be talking trash, and he'll just answer oh, yeah, in fluent freaking Mandarin, and they're like, "What? <laughs> what?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've 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 seen that guy because um, he'll he'll ask them a question, and they're kind of like standoffish yep. at first, and then he starts speaking Mandarin to them, and they're like, "Oh." Then they start giving him like wow. free stuff, like, "Oh, shoot." Well, either way, get some sleep and eat well, will you, folks? Because um, your health matters a lot to us, and yeah, and if you're gonna drink a lot of whiskey, that's cool. But then the next day, maybe don't drink a lot of whiskey and get a good night's <laughs> sleep. I think that's that's the key to life. Drink some water. Have a little water. Drink some water. Hey, th- you want to go drink uh, twelve white claws in four hours? Great. But the next day, don't drink twelve white claws <laughs> in four hours. In four hours. Do it in five. Go, go sleep. <laughs> That's why I, I, if only I could sit down with myself, I'm going to have a video um, in the future. I don't know if we'll do a podcast or a solo video about if you could sit down with yourself when you were 18, would you get along with yourself? I think that'd be a cool video. Mm. Or would you, yeah. what would, you can't tell yourself anything is like financially or anything. All you can do is be like, uh, just like personal. Hey, that'd be cool. Hey, uh, past me, um, you're, gonna be in a lot of debt <laughs> hey hey pass me um keep being real baby <laughs> i agree get some sleep eat something healthy drink some water you want to know what i'm gonna do after this i think you're gonna use a loofah for a half hour full suds just your whole body in irish spring being irish spring fresh so like even your neighbors be like Hey, uh, we smell a really fresh dude. Is he here? <laughs> well, you're uh, you're very close on that, but I'm going to be using some squash. Have you, have you used squash? No. Some, uh, the doctor squash. Oh, the, the soap. Ooh. Well, I guarantee whoever's yeah. listening to this, or we'll take you as a sponsor, Doctor Squash. I've heard that's actually really good stuff. It's like actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I just just edit in the uh, the the squash. Oh yeah, yeah. Right I'll just edit it in. Enjoy. Just you know, keep all the good parts, and then uh, get get rid of the bad parts, and see see where it lands. 
But Dane, was there anything else that you wanted to hit our um, faithful 107 YouTube subscribers? It's like every time we do an outro, you just like over exaggerate every mouth movement. That's right. <laughs> Get some sleep. If you're uh, if you're one of those uh, rise and grind people, that's great. If you're one of those grind life people, that's fine too. But just realize it's not really about getting less sleep. Not really about working harder. That's that's not the goal. You want to put yourself in a good position where you you can get that rest that you definitely need. So um, that's my take on it. I love it. And don't forget our quote of the week. That the best bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep. Thanks, E. Joseph Cosman or Cosman. Um, yeah, I agree. And I've also heard people say instead of reaching right for that melatonin or something stronger, literally just go lie down. And eventually, even if it takes 12 hours, you'll probably fall asleep. So who knows? I don't know. Once again, we're just two dudes on the Internet. On a side note, you know, you said don't reach for the melatonin or anything stronger than that. Lay down, try to get some sleep. Um, the other thing that it, I don't know, like how extensively this is researched, but people uh, have also found that if you um, think about what you're looking forward to the next day, you're more likely to go to bed than if you're dreading the next day. Mm. So. Think of the things that, that you can't wait to do when you wake up. And uh, instead of being like, oh, should I have to do this? Be like, I want to do this. Could be cool. Yeah. I like it. I might try that myself if I'm ever struggling. I'll, I've been sleeping all right these days. But ladies and gentlemen, if you've been with us since day one or if you're just hopping on the bandwagon now, we appreciate you. And we wanted to thank you so much. This is is download the uplift a place where when we fall we try and uplift my name is gabriel mark and that's my co-host dane davis you guys have yourself a blessed week and we'll see you next week just because like tom brady said we stay consistent baby consistency see you guys later